Welcome back to my next video in the series of frequency filters. This one is about simulation. So I discussed in my other videos that if you've got the kit, if you've got an oscilloscope and a function generator and some capacitors and some resistors, you should make the circuit. If you can't do that, you don't have that kit, you can simulate the circuit. So open up LT Spice, which you can download on the net, it's from Linear Technologies. Create a new schematic. We shall now add a voltage source, which in our case, from the earlier videos, was of course a signal generator. We'll now add a resistor and capacitor by pressing R and C. We'll now wire them together, just like the circuit we had earlier. We'll also add a little tap in the middle there for our V out. We'll add a ground and now we'll give some values. So we had a 10K and a 10 nanofarad capacitor. We had a sine wave which had 2.5 volt amplitude because it is worth 5 volt peak to peak and we will go for one hertz to start with. Let's now run a simulation of this and we'll use transient analysis. We'll run it for five seconds. This is our graph up. This is our trace. We've got no traces effectively at the moment. So let's probe the input and let's probe the output. And we can see the two traces line up perfectly almost perfectly that is what we expected in our first equivalent circuit was that the capacitor at low frequencies acts like an open circuit now let's change the frequency so let's make it the break frequency that we figured out which is 1 over 2 pi rc which for this case was 1591 hertz let's edit our simulation because this time period is far too big and let's now make that milliseconds if we kept it to seconds you would just get one big block of color on the graph which would be rubbish ah so now we can see exactly what we saw on the scope earlier uh, the break frequency we have roughly 45 degree phase shift as you can see on this graph and our amplitude is decreasing as well so that is effectively the capacitor becoming resistive. So that was our second equivalent circuit with a resistor where the capacitor is. Let's go all the way to one megahertz now, which is when we said the capacitor would become a short circuit because that is actually what is, this is the point of this circuit is it blocks high frequencies. It's a low pass filter. We need to change our time to five microseconds. Otherwise we'll just get some more blocks of color rerun that and we can see quite easily now that our output is pretty much flat so there's no output in amplitude at all we've still got our one meg input and our filter is working perfectly something else we can do with spice is analyze the frequency response so to do that we will change our voltage source to a one volt ac amplitude and we shall run a new simulation this time we'll do 100 points. We're in AC analysis. Start at one hertz, finish at one meg, and analyze that. Again, we need to probe our output, and we have a frequency response very similar to the graph we showed you in the tutorial videos, where we had uh, effectively uh, voltage out versus frequency, or amplitude versus frequency to be more correct. And that's what this green line is showing you here. So we can see that at low frequencies, it lets the amplitude almost stay the same, relatively the same. So it's, it's unchanged at low frequencies. And the higher the frequencies you get, the smaller the amplitude out. We can also have a look at effectively our uh, break frequency which is somewhere here. If you can find the, the 
minus 3 dB mark, there we go, about there. And we can see that the phase has changed by 45 degrees, as we said, and is about 1.596, in this case, kilohertz. We said 1. So we are slightly out on the graph. If you remember, we used that formula 1 over 2 pi RC to get the frequency response. The dotted line that you can see on there is actually the phase. So you can see how the phase changes as well.